Techno Geeks will be descending on Las Vegas for the 2008 International Consumer Electronics Show this weekend. And here to sort out some of that techno wizardry coming on the market is the Boston Globe's Hiawatha Bray. And you're going to be there also. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be grim. And I'm you say be... it's not techno geeks. It's well, nobody. Even... We're all geeks now. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, did you notice uh, my favorite example of that is the most recent James Bond movie, Casino Royale. Do you mm -hmm. remember how James Bond would always be pulling all these weird gadgets out? Mm -hmm. The only gadget you see James Bond really using in this movie is a cell phone. Yeah. If you really think about it, because everybody is so accustomed to these geeky gadgets now yeah. that nobody everybody would be impressed. Uses everybody uses them. We're all James Bond right. now. What are you impressed with that's coming out? I don't know yet. I haven't seen it, but I can tell you some of the things that we're okay. supposed to be impressed by. Right. Uh, one of them is OLED, O-L-E-D, organic light emitting diodes, which is supposed to be the next new technology in flat panel TVs. This is supposed to have something we were already supposed to have seen by now, but this time they're saying we mean it right. this it's year. It's very thin, but what it's else is good about thin. it? The other cool thing about OLED, literally cool, is that standard flat panel TVs need a backlight. They have a fluorescent uh -huh. lamp that actually shines light through them. OLED is a lot like the cathode ray tubes, the old-fashioned really? cathode ray tubes. They generate their own light. So you have this extremely thin TV panel that doesn't need a backlight, so it's even thinner than before. Mm. And they're predicting that it's going to offer much better uh, look and, and feel right. than, so than what we have now. So outrageously expensive at first. And then it outrageously come. expensive. You can already see some OLED or OLED displays in cell phones. What the, the problem has been is, bigging, is creating one big enough to use as a television mm. set. Sony is supposed to be demonstrating. The, o, the OLED is a Sony product. The yeah. OLED is going to be a Sony product, but lots of other companies are working to make OLED TVs. Uh, by the way, even further off in the distance, we're going to have laser TVs, which basically use a laser instead of a backlight. And those are also supposed to be on display as well. I'll and wait I'll, for one of those. Yeah, well, they, well, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I think that OLED might yeah. turn out to be a much more interesting right. technology because it's going to be very low power. That's one of the advantages. You don't have a backlight, mm -hmm. so it's going to use less electricity. So that's going to be pretty cool. All right. What else? I, I know Verizon has a new phone to compete with the iPhone. Well, everybody has lots of new phones to compete with the iPhone because the iPhone changed the game completely. And everybody's trying to come up with different form factors to answer it. You know, the most famous one we've seen all the commercials for already out on the market is the LG Voyager, which has the touch screen and underneath it a keyboard. Because one of the criticisms that some people have of the iPhone is that you can't really feel that virtual keyboard mm, that you have on, on the iPhone. Personally, I don't care. I love it. I prefer the virtual keypad yeah. on the iPhone to the little push buttons. But people are trying to come up with a variety of ways to answer the iPhone, and that is a measure of how utterly the iPhone yeah, completely, completely, completely changed right. the game. What about, I was looking at the uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, agenda for the, for the weekend, and one of the things that really caught my attention was uh, what's going to be available for vehicles? I mean, it's mm -hmm. just in incredible. Oh, I mean, absolutely. the GPS is just one thing. Oh, just the, it's just the beginning. Uh, there is apparently going to be an entire wing this year of the uh, of the CES exhibit, which is actually spread over several convention centers in Las Vegas. There's going to be one whole section entirely devoted to cars. For the first time, one of the keynote speakers is going to be the CEO of an auto company, uh, Mr. Uh, Wagner. Wagner, but he's Wagner. trying to push uh, his car. I saw that too. But he's right. like, well, never mind the technology. Here's our great GM. You know? Yeah, but the, 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 the relative value, I, I forget the numbers, but the percentage of the money you pay for a car now that's going into electronics is just booming. A huge really? percentage of what you're paying for well, now what, what is are some computers. Of, so you're going to be able to get Bluetooth yeah. that, that's also connected. Is there literally a wireless phenomenon inside a car now? There's can a you wireless type phenomenon. On your, yeah, exactly. You can where type you, on your computer or your, your passenger can <laughs> while, you're, <laughs> while you're driving, right? Yeah, I don't think there are going to be too many people trying to type on their cars. It's mainly going to be things like... Well, they're texting like, now and killing yes, people. Why not right. type? Absolutely. But I think it's mainly intended for things like, for example, being able to do all kinds of remote control features using Bluetooth uh, and voice and, and, so, and voice technology as well. But there are tons of other things going on there. Like, for example, all the proximity sensors that are starting to appear on cars. You currently see them on luxury cars, but it's getting to the point where you will soon see, as standard features on just about every car, things like the radar in effect, their ultrasonic backup mm -hmm. sensors yeah, that will that's detect... Annoying. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the first step. And of course, you already have the Lexus that parks itself. Yeah, right. That's based on that kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Little by little, all of this stuff is being integrated into the cars. You're talking about cars that are eventually going to drive themselves. Oh, eventually. That's a long way off, though. Although, of course, there's a huge amount of experimentation going on that because that's a very key factor in the whole accidents. robotics yeah, revolution. Right. No, it's not. You, you could probably do it in ways that would have a lot fewer accidents because you've ever, each that's car has I mean. its own level of intelligence. Right. And so it's not just following a road. It's also got sensors like ultrasound that allow
allow them to know what's going on all around it. Right. And so before even having to be told, the car knows, you're too close to this other car, I'm going to stop. And we're a long way from that mm -hmm. at this point, but the technologies that make it possible are steadily being built more and more into the cars. Uh, there's a company in Detroit that is building a full-fledged PC that gets r placed in your dashboard instead of the radio. It acts as your radio. It's also GPS. It's also satellite radio. It also plays uh, your, if well, to, for passengers anyway, it can play them videos. Video, yeah. And it can do all this stuff. It's a full-fledged Windows PC that you just plug into the car. And can you have your own personalized? Can, can I watch one movie and you you watch another? Well, I don't think they've done that yet, and certainly you don't want the driver to be seen. <laughs> well, no, no, yeah, movies. we keep saying not the driver, right? Not the driver, but all of these things are becoming standard issue. That's the point. There's this report from a group called the Telematics Research Group that basically says that 60 to 70 percent of next of this coming year's car models are going to have some percentage of these various technologies built right, right into the car. We're going to have to have you back after it's you becoming go universal. to see what you really like. Oh, absolutely. Take pictures. That'll be great. Oh, Unless yeah. Not, We're going to have lots of forget, pictures. And so what if they're copyrighted? Hey, can right? we talk about other stuff, too, or are we running out of time? <laughs> We're out of time. Oh, you're no fun. Yeah, right. get around to I the... said we'll have you back. Oh, all Goodbye. Right. Hiawatha Bray. Pleasure to have you. <laughs> all enjoy. right. And that's it for Greater Boston. Tomorrow night, it's finally Iowa caucus night, plus Congressman Michael Capuano and Gary Loveman of Harris Entertainment. That's tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Good night. <laughs>